So to start back, what the current manifestation was, what's going on in Haiti, in the atmosphere of the assassination of Jovenel Moïse. How do we get from Jovenel Moïse to this particular point? Jovenel Moïse assassination to this point. Well, <clears throat> the attempt is to contextualize the, uh, uh, the power players on the island, as well as to contextualize what's going on in Haiti with the larger geopolitical uh, processes that are taking place, whether it's in Ukraine, as well as uh, 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 Palestine. Post the assassination of Jovenel Moïse, uh, Dr. Ariel Henry was appointed or selected by the West as prime minister or interim prime minister of the island. And he, basically he was put in place by the American State Department in the core group, which includes France, Canada, the US and Great Britain as a, a, a side partner. And his intent, the intent behind appointing Ariel Henry was twofold. One was to continue uh, uh, the privatization of all the state assets uh, beginning that Matili began after the earthquake, the privatization of the ports, uh, um, the, the privatization of the electric company, as well as other uh, uh, <clears throat> neoliberal policies that he was supposed to implement. Um, now, Dr. Henri was also implicated in Jovenel Maurice's assassination as has come to light. His wife also was implicated, but you know, in Haiti, rumor becomes reality, so we won't touch on that. Um, now, what happened was Henri, once he, uh, the second uh, thing he was supposed to do was basically organize elections on the island. Uh, Haiti hasn't had Haiti hasn't had elections since under Matili, so there's basically no parliamentary uh, parliamentary uh, uh, no Congress, no no president, nothing. So he was due to so two things: continue the neoliberal policies that Jovenel. Uh, was supposed to continue from uh, Matili, as well as hold parliamentary and presidential presidential elections on the island. He implemented the con complete privatization of the electric company, the complete privatization of the ports, the signing of you know the whole identity politics, except homosexuality in Haiti. However, he had he did not hold elections, and he was in constant conflict with uh, the gangs that are concentrated in the urban ghettos of Haiti. Now, you, you have two viewpoints concerning the gang. You have the whole IT Liberté, Kim Ives position, who looks at the gang under the GNF or G9 gang. Uh, uh, led by Jimmy Chirizier, Jimmy Barbecue Chirizier, as a revolutionary, a socialist revolutionary movement in which uh, Jimmy is trying to organize uh, uh, the poor to topple the, the Haitian imperial uh, under the imperial influence, the Haitian state under the imperial influ influence of the U.S. and the core group. And then the, on the other side, you have the, the, the managerial, the professional managerial class who looks at the Haitian gangs as vagabond gang members who are dealing drugs, uh, control. They are basically influenced by the Black American underclass. And that's represented by uh, 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 the, the gang leader's name is... Uh, uh, Andre Johnson, Johnson Andre, excuse me. He goes by the name of Izo. He's basically, uh, his entourage is basically into get, uh, drug dealing. He he posts uh, rap music and uh, uh, videos of Haitian Creole rap, basically replicating the black underclass culture that we find here in America. So un these two viewpoints of the gangs, the the socialist revolutionary represented by uh, uh, Cherizier, 
as well as the uh, uh, the vagabond, the the gangster uh, that we find represented by Izo. So Ariel Henry found himself pitted against Cherizier as well as the other gangs. Now Cherizier has been sanctioned by the U.S. government as well as uh, uh, the U.N. and Partly, he claims it's political, uh, um, given an event that took place under the Makalian administration. That being said, this conflict would be exacerbated because on February 7th, uh, Dr. Henri was supposed to hold elections or resign, and he did neither. Now, to combat the gang situation, Dr. Henri, with the assistance of the core group, America in particular, decided that they were going to go and invite a Kenyan delegation under this missionary police force to assist the Haitian police force to combat the gang situation in Haiti. So after February 7th, Dr. Henri decided he was going to fly because the Kenyan Parliament had decided that uh, there was it was not an agreement between Haiti and Kenya. Therefore, they could not uh, 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 allow the police force to travel uh, uh, to Haiti. So he traveled to Kenya to sign this agreement. And while in Haiti, while in Kenya, Jimmy Cherizier decided to unite with some of the more violent drug dealing gangs under. Uh, the nomenclature vivant sum. So it was a unification of the gangs under this vivant sum in which, under this nomenclature vivant sum in which they would unite and prevent Dr. Henri from returning to the island and basically gain control over all of the major institutions in Haiti. They attacked the prison system in Port-au-Prince uh, they burned it. They released many of the prisoners. They took over the international airport. And this was their revolutionary moment. Now, there's a third member that, in, that comes into this process, and this is Guy Philippe, who in 2004 had fomented a coup against uh, Aristide, and he was implicated in drug dealing and money laundering. Uh, uh, by the U.S. and was jailed for about six, seven years and was released last year. Upon his return to the island, um, he decided he was going to start a revolution in Haiti and topple uh, the Henri government. And he also united with some of the gang members. So you have Jimmy Cherizier, Guy Philippe, who is basically trying to uh, uh, form alliances with some of the grassroots uh, political parties, such as P.T. Dessalines under uh, Moïse Jean-Charles. And they got together and decided they were going to topple the uh, Henri government while he was away. Henri tried to return on Monday, and they would not allow him because they took over the uh, Cherizier and Vivant Sum took over the airport. So he flew into Puerto Rico, uh, CARICOM, the Caribbean community, uh, under the directorship of Guyana, decided to, at the behest of the U.S., decided to call an emergency. Well, this is, I believe this is their annual meeting anyway, to call an emergency meeting on Haiti and discuss the situation in Haiti. Uh, they decided that uh, to resolve the current situation in Haiti, that Dr. Henri must, um, must resign and a presidential council of nine, nine members would basically go and govern Haiti uh, in the absence of Dr. Henri. So of the nine member council, seven would be voting members and two represented by civil society and the religious sector would basically be in observing, uh, two observing members of the council. So the groups that were invited to constitute this presidential council, uh, outside of um, uh, Petit Dessalines, they constituted the group that formed the Montana Accord. The Montana Accord was a group of pro professional managerial Haitians who uh, uh, of 
uh, representing different political parties who were trying to come up with an accord to transition Haiti from Dr. Henri into uh, 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 elections and have a, a self-sustaining uh, governance. That being said, um, the council at the behest of the United States laid down some stipulations for those for those who are looking to participate in the upcoming elections one three stipulations were put in place one you could not be sanctioned by the un or have any charges against you two you could not have any criminal record and three uh, uh if you're looking to run for elections you could not participate in this presidential council so basically that eliminated uh, uh jimmy cherizier and the and guy philippe uh, so Viva Sum was totally eliminated and they, they, they hold a substantial following. Now, people have to realize the majority of the chaos and the crisis we're witnessing is concentrated in Port-au-Prince. Outside of Port-au-Prince, the island is practically uh, 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 peaceful. So with this large following, now that Henri, uh, his stipulation is the president, he will only resign once the presidential council has been put in place. And the other stipulation regarding the presidential council is that they must accept uh, uh, the mission force, the, the Kenyan mission force, to uh, uh, um, to assist the Haitian police force in uh, um, combating the gang issue. So today, many of the gang members replied. Jimmy Cherizier replied and said that Caricom and this presidential council has no basis. Uh, uh, no political authority to dictate who can run in, uh, for uh, office in Haiti. Guy Philippe, uh, in an interview, made the same comments. Now, the the alternative solution that the grassroots community is offering in Haiti, people like Moïse Jean Shah, who has partnered up with Guy Philippe uh, uh, and is backing Guy Philippe for president of the country, this, the alternative solution to this presidential council that the U.S. and the imperial powers are putting in place is to have the, the Haitian Supreme Court, the coup de cassation, uh, basically the leader, the head of the Supreme Court, <clears throat> uh, become president and nominate a, 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 a prime minister to hold election, similar to what happened under uh, uh, the sister Tuyo tu uh, um after the ouster of um, uh, Aristide. So these are the two solutions now. Uh, you have the presidential council on the one hand, and you have the Haitian grassroots community promoting uh, um, uh, the Haitian Supreme Court leader as the transitional government to hold elections and transition Haiti to a democratic political, uh, uh, a democratic system. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop there.